recommend you Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, this is Arash, uh, my amazing friend, and Lily, uh, our AUT graduate. Um, um, actually, we have another graduate here over there. <laughs> you take us. So uh, thanks for coming over. Um, and here are my students. So Arash has been, um, he, he is an entrepreneur, so yeah. he's been working on new solutions for um, as he will talk through I, I don't spoil it for you um, this is the mic by the way so if that one um, does a good quality capture of your sound so if you want to like pass it like whenever they really want to take over just pass it or just clip it on your that's okay. the idea so it's okay all right okay <laughs> <laughs> so um i don't take much of introduction time because you're going to do it for me mm -hmm. and here we are cool awesome um kia ora everyone um i'm arash i'm here with my colleague lily and the plan today is i'm going to a little bit talk about our company and i try to make it fast and easy sorry for the noise by the way and um then you have enough time to ask questions i mean we invite you to ask tough questions that's why I have Lily here, so help me with tough questions. All right, so uh, our company called um, Car Technologies. Um, I established company in late 2017, and our vision was uh, making content accessible with the sign language. And the reason that I started was I was doing PhD just across the corner, and uh, I was doing wireless security, totally different things. And all of a sudden, I got a I got a disease called Meniere. It's an inner ear problem. You get a vertigo attacks. It's like your worst hangover without having an alcohol and party. Um, so it was really tough. And uh, what happened to me was I lost hearing in one ear. And because I was a rebellion, I said, OK, we need to fix this. Um, so I've been introduced to the community of Meniere people. We figured out there's no solution for it. And um, so I come with some sort of my own recipe to solve the problem. What I did was I talked to a couple of doctors and we came to the idea of injecting a toxin in my left ear. So I killed the nerve. So I lost hearing in one ear. And I thought I'm a genius. I solved the problem. I figured out it's not a smartest solution because I got this disease when I'm young. There's a chance of getting other ear affected as well. So I could cope completely deaf. That was like, whoa, what's going on? So leave it back story. I was doing PhD in Oakland University. I had my first startup. Uh, I was developing a software intelligence soft for CEOs. Um, so it was going very well. I was super happy. Then all of a sudden, I figured out there's a chance of me getting deaf. And I looked around in you know, Oakland University. We didn't have any deaf students. In whole um, startup ecosystem, we don't have any deaf, deaf people. I was like, what's going on? So that made me like interested to discover more. So I went to Deaf Education Center. We figured out the number of dropped out from school for deaf students much higher. And in New Zealand, we have one of the best system in the world for deaf education. We still the number of dropped out is a lot. And we figured out there's not enough teacher who knows sign language. And there was a global problem. And because I identify myself as a problem solver, and I went to the Deaf Education Center and said, hey guys. I have a solution for you. And they said, what? So, there's something called online education. And you don't need to do anything. We bring the teacher to you. And they said, well, we use sign language. Globally, we don't have enough teachers who know sign language. And I said, OK, we can do crazy things. How about in New Zealand, we develop science. In US, people develop mathematics and courses related to mathematics and sign language. In Europe, people do that, that. So we collectively come across with the online education platform to solve, solve the problem. And they said, no, each country has own sign languages. If I do something in New Zealand using sign language, I cannot use in the United States because the language is different. Then I said, oh, there is another, another idea I have called closed caption technology. So any video you gave it to me, I provide closed caption for you. And I feel like a hero. And they said, I figured out the solution was really stupid. Number one, kids cannot read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and number two, if you grow up as a deaf person, even though you're born in New Zealand, English is your second language. And I'm an immigrant. 
and I came to English is my second language. So if I saw the subtitle going super fast, I really miss the movie. So I've related a lot. So for people like you who want to have the company, it's very important is engage with your customer right at the beginning. Do not throw the solution. Just shut up and listen. So that's what I learned it in a hard way. So I said, okay, maybe I shut up and ask you guys, how can I help? So they said, if you could make a teacher who's available 24 seven and could do signing, that has a real value. So this is how Car a company started. So from there we, should I go all the way here to click next? Do you have a clicker here? No? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you, students. <laughs> oh, can you? Oh, I got to. What was saying? Oh, yeah. So this is our vision. So we thought we could go beyond education. So if you have a solution which is scalable, could be used everywhere, um, technically you can remove the communication barrier. So this is how. The, the whole idea starts. So we think about uh, how we can have Disney movie accessible in sign language, how if you have a Zoom call with your deaf colleague, how we can have a virtual translator interpreter available. So, so many crazy things happen. Go <laughs> next. All right, um, so we were not the first company in the world who thought the same. So when I started the company in 2017, there are these people doing the same ideas. And I was really disappointed at the beginning. I said, oh, the other people probably are doing the same thing. So it's not a very new idea. So uh, so my idea was there's one idea when you want to have around a business. OK, what is the cool things happening in the world? You localize it in New Zealand. This is how we made Trade Me, right? The people overseas, they do eBay. We do Trade Me here, so we become rich, et cetera, et cetera. So the whole idea was, OK, get these people idea because they are in different sign languages and localize it for New Zealand. And um, we create our first avatar, and uh, which could sign. So we were super excited. We went to the deaf community and feel like a hero, and we receive a huge pushback. And they hated us. They hated us really badly. Like, we hate you. Go away. You destroy our languages. And we've been a little bit disappointed at the beginning. And we're like, oh, what's going on? We thought we were doing a good thing, but we weren't. And the reason was obvious. Sign language heavily rely on facial expression. And so in a spoken world, if I get excited, I talk louder. How would you sign louder? It's come all the facial expression. And if you look at all these avatars, oh, come on, like, do you want, <laughs> would you like talk to that person, give you bank account details to somebody like this, ask you, give your, like, I don't know, address information, personal information, sign language, you wouldn't. So, and at the same time, when we start the company, um, uh, one of the people from Deaf Education Center in New Zealand, uh, they sent us an article from World Federation Deaf saying avatars is bad and destroying the language. And it's a bad idea to have avatar doing the sign. So we start with that hype. And this is 2021, the same companies, and these are amount of some sort of improvement they made. So um, we thought at the beginning, if you re really want to solve the problem, you have to take it to the next level. So would you mind going next? <laughs> so this is our first avatar, which been really pushed back and almost kicked from the deaf community. So, oh, forgot to put one slide. Um, this is our second generation of avatars. <laughs> you can see it here. Um, it's been designed in-house at AUT. Um, so when we show that, to the deaf community because look at the facial expression hand movement are really 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 different do you have it somewhere yeah cool actually hossein almost designed it so <laughs> so uh, while hossein is showing you our next iteration of avatars um her name was nikki um when we show it to the deaf community they almost they were in tears like amount of the progress that we made so, um, and it could not be possibly happen without listening to what your customer wants. So if, I don't know, if you want to have an animation company, production company, advertise, anything, always try to understand what your customer expectation are. And if you could address that, let's laser focus that, you have a huge advantage to your competitor. So that's the other things. Uh, coming up. 
that will do. So moving that to this, people will now like figure it out. It's it's been used in industry a lot. We didn't like reinvent the wheel, right? It wasn't like wow, it's a huge like science that nobody will understand. But the thing is, this tool hasn't been used very well because when we developing a product for somebody, that's a very wrong philosophy. When you want to develop a product, you have to develop with a specific group. And so from there, we turn to Nikki. Then now we are moving to MetaHuman, which already I think you guys all know about and you play with it a lot, right? We showed that to Dev Commit. They were like, absolutely not. So this is so cool. And all the animation, the facial expression was even super awesome for them. So um, then Epic get excited. Wow, that's a cool application. We are partnership. We got some exclusive right on MetaHuman. Why can't got ex um, excited? Give us a landing. They have like they have the whole system for us. So um, then everything just born from them. What is the next slide? Do I know that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The next. So the whole idea was Kara was um, the, what we are working on. We are doing currently a motion capture. And what are we doing? We record all of these animations. And what we do is we are hopefully making a gesture library of sign language. So when we have enough animation, so we can provide automatic translation for everything. So that, that's the whole idea of CAR. But we have two problems. Number one, animation cleaning is a heck of a mess. So you can go next. <laughs> so we figured out maybe we could come with a smart solution for it because now we all moving to Unreal. So because on Unreal you can do some coding, you can do cool, crazy stuff. So this is the raw data that we get. Oh, seriously, what is this? And we try, okay, so how about we define the body, detect the inclusion and try to like jazz it up with the requirement of a sign language. So we can have some sort of we call it a smart cleaning solution, which is really cool. With a tiny bunch of codes we get from that to that, <laughs> which is really helpful. So we can go next. And the other problem we had with the blending, right? Animation blending on Unreal is cool for, for games that I'm standing and I wake up and I walk so we can blend this animation together. But the challenge that we have in the sign language, it didn't work for sign language. Uh, for example, we had the animation, which is this is sign for Christ Church. Like this is C and this is a sign for Christ Church, and there's a rain. So we were doing that. The problem was using like just state of the art, just from the Unreal animation blending. Uh, we will miss the one C. Uh, I can show it to you. Can you play it, Billy? All right. So um, just pay attention. So these are the standard blending. And one C, you don't get the next one. And here we try to get the next. So we try to see what the technology is available and how we can calculate that. We're discussing with Lily about the mathematics we use for our own blending system was ridiculously a lot. So then go next. So um, then everybody get excited. We work with Ministry of Education, the so Ministry of um, um, uh, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Social Development, Auckland University get excited. National Theatre came to us uh, in London because in the theatre they bring the interpreter on stage. Imagine I'm talking and there's an interpreter do the signing, right? The problem for the deaf community was the show is happening here and you have to look somewhere else. The problem with hearing people was like, oh, you want to enjoy the show, but you can't because there's an interpreter doing the sign which you can't understand at all. So we took the show, we translated using Nikki and put on the smart glasses which was like really, really cool idea that we did. And there's a cool project coming up. I think that's it. Oh, oh one more thing is, is um, again, the tools that we are doing using here is not like out of space, right? There's something that you guys are using in the movie and animation already. And we try to see what are these tools or how we can provide a better help for, for, for deaf community. One of the things that we are doing, the uh, tools that we develop called InSign technology which usually when you see a cartoon for kids or, or any sign language or see the Jacinda's talking, there is a there's an interpreter at the background translating the sign, right? Or sometimes the interpreter at the corner. Um, 
accessibility always considered to be some sort of an afterthought. And we thought, how we can break it? So we partner with one of the cool companies called Pokeko Pictures. And um, they have a cartoons called uh, Book Hungry Bears. Yeah, called Book Hungry Bears. So it's about four bears going to the jungle looking for a book to read it. So the video that you're going to see, the first three seconds is for hearing people. And the last three seconds is, I think, what Cara can provide help to make uh, inclusivity for, for deaf kids. Would you like play? Oh, it doesn't have a sound. It's look at this per se. This is not a dinosaur. It's a pirate ship. So what we can do because everything is animation layers, so we can remove the character and put it on animation on top. So you can see the bird signing inside the movie. So we try to develop the whole pipeline of how we can work with other animator and how we can easily merge with the current pipeline for for storytelling, for animating, so we can add sign language on top. And today, today, yes, yeah, so but today, we just apply for our TV show on Hey Hey, so finger cross, so we get our first TV show, which is really cool. It's going to be accessible in sign language. I think that's it. Thank you very much. So, any questions or anything? Yeah. <laughs> so, Lily, maybe you want to come in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just before I start, I had a ACL surgery, so I'm feeling a bit pain on my knee. Is it okay if I sit down? Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Do they go out? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, you know, so far my experience at CARA has been, you know, really positive and, and really enjoyable. And so um, basically um, our um, CTO, Farmia, um, got in contact with me um, and asked me if, you know, I had any interest and in stuff uh, for working for CARA. And yeah, a couple of interviews later and then, yeah, so, yes. Uh, so currently, um, I'm a junior animator. So um, there's two animators at CARA um, at the moment. So we have Richard, who's a senior animator. And so basically, what we do is um, we're the ones who, you know, clean up the mocap data, um, add any keyframe, you know, extra animation, um, you know, especially in faces, facial animation and stuff. Um, yeah, so we work alongside, you know, the programmers and stuff um, to, you know, help develop um, a signing avatar um, who's uh, really believable. Yeah. Yeah, I would say definitely Unreal Engine. Um, like, you know, a year ago, I didn't think I would ever use it. And then, yeah, so here I am. And uh, it's actually a really cool program. So. I'd really, you know, advise you guys to to learn it. Um, the qualities that our team is looking for is um. So there are some tangibles quality, untangible qualities. And untangible qualities or soft skill or any, any fancy name you want to give it is, the first thing is being a quick learner. Um, I have a personal belief, I'm not sure it's right or wrong, within the 10 years Maya will be gone and we're all going to use Unreal Engine. Um, so ability to switch between different needs and just fit into the pipelines. It's, it's one of the greatest abilities that one person can can do, as I, I think. Uh, because again, the technology moved very fast. One day we use iPhone as a facial capture. One day we decided to throw it away. One day we decided to use Facebook. And the person who can work very closely with those applications is, is really, really thing. But it's very hard for us to validate that on an interview. Um, so I was, I'd like to talk about like, tangible assets that you can provide. 
the the final project that you guys doing which is full of suffering that you were discussing is it's is it's a time that you guys can shine because um we know that like there's not much experience and that's your technically your cv so um so when you're doing the demo days do you have a demo days or showing this what do you call it yeah. A screen night, yeah. Um, so we call it demo day. So in the screen night, um, sometimes, like I remember, I come to a couple of times. I said, "Oh, that is so cool. Who's that person?" So people come in and, and show your work. So uh, so that's something that I really encourage people to um, to really uh, try to shine on, on your final project because that can make some attraction. And the third thing is, I think you have a, like years of experience. Someone like was saying and um, try to ask the question at the beginning um, so I'm, I'm sure you would be more than happy to make some interest for you or, or UC's network. Thank you. Um, so I guess, oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so um, for the moment, um, because you know we're slowly, you know, getting into a, a new suit and stuff, and um, you know, learning um, Unreal and stuff, and and with using MetaHumans too. Um, we'd kind of um, originally um, we did use um. So the, the iPhone capture system to capture faces um, and stuff. Um, but since we've just like moved on to metahumans and stuff, um, for the meantime, we've been doing um, a lot of keyframe animation. Um, so what we'll do is um, we'll have the reference video of our signer um, right there. So we can copy um, and try to match um, her emotions and you know lip syncing as much as we can. Uh, you might know yeah, um, more about this. <laughs> so, um, yes, it was. Um, and the reason is because um, we figured out right from the beginning, sign language is a performance. Um, because if you look at the signer, the way they they narrate the story, it's, 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 you cannot teach a machine to do that. And you definitely fail. And in, in terms of um, narrating a story, it's very important for us to stick to the mocap. But the challenge that we had was the signer that we brought and doing the uh, mocap for them. A challenge was they're not a professional actors. So how do you make the environment that they, you can get the best out of a person? And that was challenge number one. And challenge number two was how do you how do you how do you pop into other people's pipeline? So you already develop a story, and a pipeline you have like the huge massive people working on a project. How do you add on on top without causing too much headache uh, to make that animation happen. So that's that's that, that's the cool things. But moving on in the future, we're planning to do a hybrid version. So we're not doing completely um, machine translation again because of the artistic part. But there are so many repetitive parts that the machine can jump in and help. But for other application, recently we start working with Ministry of Civil Defense because, for example, in Christchurch when the shooting happened. It took two hours to find the interpreter, and we had a couple of deaf people saying oh, we have no idea what's going on. So for those application, being robotic is absolutely fine. And that's we can make it full automatic. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, I definitely learned a lot more sign language than you know I knew. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm. This is who. So yeah. who? Okay. So uh, my finger spelling for my name is L I L Y. Yeah. Uh, and I 
where is that? Tara? Yeah. Tara. Um, what's work? Work. Yeah. yeah. Tara. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So like I've, I've definitely picked up a, a lot of sign language. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, no, so we have um, our sign language expert who helps us um, with our animations and making sure that um, we're getting the signing as accurate as it can be. Because a lot of the times in the mocap performance, um, a lot of the data gets lost. Well, not the data, but the, the performance. Um, so. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we have to go in and, you know, make sure because um, fingers are so important to get right in sign language. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure that if it's supposed to be a flat palm, that it, it is actually a flat palm um, and, you know, it's not doing something weird that yeah. has a completely different meaning. So, um, yeah, no. Does that answer your question? Yeah, cool. <laughs> be please learner. Uh, if you, you guys ask Lily to say what is your name, right? And she said, me, who, Lily. So if you figure it out, the, the grammar is totally different. So it's not word by word translation. So um, that's, that's our challenge number one. So in order to overcome that, we develop something we call the color notation system. Technically is our own coding language, like C++. So there's a, some syntax and you press enter, some like gibberish things happen, right? So we develop the same thing for sign language. So we should take care of the um, the grammar part of it. And the second thing that we have to take care of what we call is sentimental analysis. So is this sentence a sad sentence, a happy sentence, or or or, 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 or surprising sentence? And um, there are many researches already and tools are available for sentimental analysis of a sentence. Then everything comes to what we have. We call the gesture database. It's database of saying my name or fire or shooting or or or, or anything they can name it. And um, so based on the current notation system, it gets all of those animation. And based on the technique that we have on the blending, then we can on 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 real get it on almost real time. So within one or two minutes uh, delay. So this whole how the whole system works. And again. It comes to the diff many iteration has to be happened. So one of the challenges that we have for blending is if the sign is something like that and the next sign is something like that, how do you blend it like that? And how, how would you make that curve happen on Unreal? So, so still, so it's a long time, but our first iteration is good enough. What we call it fit for purpose. Use that a lot on your, on your products, man, when you have your uh, startup up and running. is fit for purpose of the emergency. But if you want to move on to more like storytelling, we need to have much more better, better blending system, much more better. Um, have you guys watched a movie called Fight Club? Cool. How many people watch it? Okay. The people who haven't watched it, please go and watch it. Uh, there, there's a part in the in the movie says, "If you want something, just simply ask." And is it such a great philosophy that helps us a lot? It's no brainer, but it's really helping us a lot. So I remember the reason that we get engaged between us with, with Unreal was uh, at the beginning we didn't have investment yet and getting an Unreal Engine cost us a thousand five hundred ish 
and it was too expensive. So pick up a phone and call them. So uh, we didn't know who to call. We just called the the director of non-gain development in London. <laughs> and we said, hey, we have this project. And we show a couple of demo to him. And he was like, yeah, sure, yeah, cool. And can you send it to me? We sent it to him. He sent it to a couple of uh, people at on, on Real, and they went absolutely crazy. And they said, oh, we never saw such a cool application. You could simply with some tools, you can make something so nice. And they get back to us and said, hey, there is a, there is a grant that you should apply. And we'd like to help you. We didn't take that serious at the beginning. So the director from London called me again and said, for you, we extend the deadline from one more day to do it. And, and we did it and we get a grant. And so we get some grants. Then we get more collaboration with them. And when the Epic, uh, like MetaHuman come in, they give us the exclusive access to the beta at the beginning. And they said, OK, what else we can? Yeah, and what, what, what else they, we, we're planning to do is, for, for us, um, deaf people has more wrinkle on their face because they use more facial expression. And we thought maybe for next iteration with MetaHuman, we can introduce some deaf people so they can 3D scan that and put a deaf character in the MetaHuman with more nuance of, of the gestures. And they're really in. And they asked us to apply for mega grant, and we did so. We asked for the top money, and uh, a little bit radio silence at the moment because of, I said, they're fighting with Apple. Um, so my advice is don't be shy and just, just ask them. So when, when we did MetaHuman, we sent them back to them, hey, this is what we did in MetaHuman. And they were like, ah, oh, we know you, you're soul machine. No, we're so not soul machine. <laughs> <laughs> we are a different company. So my suggestion is I'm very shy and it's very hard for me sometimes to ask, but uh, magic happens. So if you have a cool ideas or something um, or, or, or I don't know if you if you if you want to have a, your own story to be narrated in, 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 in animation or you want to have a, make your movie, just go and talk to people, share your idea and ask for your help. Hey, I need this. How can you help me? And sometimes you get a good answer. Sometimes not, but sometimes you do. Oh yes, one night. Do you remember? They said, "Oh, by the way, we are we are we are heading to um, U.S. and we're presenting in a big company and uh, we're presenting something for Boeing. They are they were the, those time they were developing the non-game stuff um, for for rendering, and they said, "Oh, we are we are doing something for Boeing. And can you make Nikki as an air host? Do you remember that night, Jose? And we show they they show off." us as something that's really cool. So, um, and, and if you have a really unique idea, these people are really looking for a unique idea. So, and, and they're really, really responsive. I really uh, like encourage people. I'm happy to make some introduction if you guys have any cool ideas, just let me know. Yeah, so I guess basically back in first year, um, I got uh, an internship at Weta uh, in the animation department. Um, um, oh yeah, I, I was just on their um, careers website um, and I think uh, a couple of the teachers um, at AUT were talking about it mentioned it um, and I applied. Um, they sent uh, an email back to me for like, you know, uh, a couple of interviews and stuff um, and talked to them and yeah, they, yeah. Um, so I ended up getting um, the summer internship. Um, so I'm not too sure if they have anything open this year so far. Uh, 
No, nothing. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, my internship ran from November to uh, early February, I think. Um, so, you know, it was straight after uni, um, just went and yeah, it was definitely like one of the best learning experiences, especially, you know, for my first year and the fact that I could come back to you, uh, like, you know, to keep studying with like all this knowledge um, from the industry. Um, so it was it was really helpful of an experience. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like I learned a lot from um, the animators um, at Weta um, because a lot of them are super experienced. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I've ever met a mean animator. I don't think they exist. Like they're always like super helpful. Um, Oh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple of exceptions, but I mean, yeah, like uh, a lot of, you know, New Zealand animators um, <laughs> uh, are really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was um, really cool. Um, and I guess, you know, with like the different sort of perspectives because you know where there's a massive company you know, like a little cog in the pipeline um, and you know coming to a startup company um, I've really been able to like you know see the difference between you know, work styles and stuff um, and yeah like I mean I, a year ago I wouldn't have had a clue like where I was going to be you know while studying and stuff and you know seeing what would happen so yeah it was um, a really cool insight and I feel like it helped me so much for like developing my skills um you know especially especially like you know tools and stuff and like a lot of what the animators recommended um I could go look at yeah yeah So, um, Arash is, is a great friend of mine, and the, um, the thing that I'm going to talk about these two lovely people is not um, their expertise and these fantastic things, is about their personalities. So, one of the great personalities of Arash, as you have realized, that is manifested in, in his business is helping others. So, he's been always like, and this positive personality that come to you and, and tries to help you out and, and makes you feeling good regardless of who you are and what you're doing and regardless of all the business. Um, and we, the, the world needs more like these people that um, their, the business, the act of making money is basically helping others at the same time. And one comment about Lily, Lily, uh, the, the last year when she was here, she was like an angel walking around, helping everybody because she was damn good at animating. And especially my students, visual, we are visual artists. We, we focus on, on different things. Um, I think Texas remembers that. that um, so many of my students, needed help on, on animation and, and animating and, and, and she was like very supportive uh, of, of everyone here 
I'm sure that she's bringing that good heart to your company as well. And I think the, these are the kind of um, artists we need for the future. People who are really good at what they're doing and really good at who they are. Thank you so much.